Hi students, welcome to Sumit tutorial. I am Sumit Nirwani and today we will be doing this chapter called as radiation. Now, let's see the words theory. Now, it is a common belief that it is the hot body that radiates heat energy and that heat energy which is radiated by the hot body is absorbed by the cold body. So, Commonly it is believed that suppose if this is the hot body, this will give out heat energy which will be absorbed by the cold surrounding and that is the reason why the temperature of the surrounding increases and the temperature of the hot body decreases. Right? This is the common belief. But in 1792, in 1792, uh, it was proved that it is not only the hot body but it is also cold body that radiates heat energy. Now question, how can a cold body radiate heat energy. Now we all know that all bodies are made up of atoms. Atoms are made up of extra nuclear charge that is protons, neutrons and electrons. Electrons are charged particles. Electrons are in, a, in constant random motion. Right? Now when any charged particle moves it gives rise to electromagnetic field. Right? That means whether it is a hot body or a cold body it is definitely going to give rise to electromagnetic field because of the movement of the electrons right and this uh, electromagnetic field will give rise to the radiations that will come out from every body irrespective of whether it is hot body or it is a cold body that was what was Prevost's theory Prevost's theory was that it is not only a hot body that radiates energy but it is also a cold body that would radiate energy right so can we just write Prevost's theory down All bodies That is the new thing about Prevost's theory. It is not only a hot body, but it is also a cold body that radiates uh, energy. Reason. Why is it that a cold body also radiates energy? Everybody, everybody is made up of, everybody is made up of protons, neutrons and electrons, right? Now, these minute particles possess thermal energy right now these minute particles possess thermal energy as a result they are in a state of constant random motion therefore Right? Now, the vibe, these 
vibrating charged particles these vibrating charged particles constantly radiate energy in the form of electro electromagnetic wave these vibrating charged particles constantly radiate energy in the form of electromagnetic waves except at absolute zero so except if the temperature of the body is absolute zero the body will keep radiating heat energy right that is the reason why whether it is a hot body or a cold body it is going to radiate energy right so this was the reason now therefore i can say that according to prevost's uh, theory Whether every body radiates heat at all temperatures except at absolute zero. Every body radiates heat at all temperatures except absolute zero. And second. The radiant energy emitted per unit time by a body depends only upon the absolute zero. It does not depend upon the temperature of the surrounding. The radiant energy emitted per unit time. by a body depends on its absolute temperature and not the temperature of the surrounding right so that is what is prevost theory Now, if it does not depend upon the temperature of the surrounding, let us see three conditions. What happens when a hot body is placed in a cold surrounding? Hot body in cooler surrounding. What happens when a hot body is placed in a cooler surrounding? Now, if when a hot body is placed in a cooler surrounding, the body continuously radiates heat energy to the surrounding. At the same time, the body also absorbs heat energy from the surrounding. Now, the rate at which it is, now we said that uh, how much heat energy will be radiated depends upon the temperature. Since the temperature of the body is more than that of the surrounding, the rate at which it will radiate heat energy will be more. then the rate at which it will absorb heat energy see this is your hot body placed in a cool surrounding so this is going to radiate heat energy this is also going to absorb heat energy from the surrounding the speed with which it gives out energy will be more than the speed with which it will absorb heat energy right since it is giving out heat energy at a higher speed and it is absorbing it at a lower speed the temperature of the body decreases and that is the reason why the temperature of the body decreases when it is kept in a cooler surrounding and not because heat energy is absorbed by the surrounding but the radiant energy emitted per unit time is more than the radiant energy absorbed per unit time right that is what happens when a hot body is kept in a cool surrounding right 
a hot body in a cool surrounding a body continues to radiate heat to the surrounding and absorb and at the same time absorb heat from the surrounding so it is going to be radiating heat to the surrounding it will be absorbing heat from the surrounding but on account of being at higher temperature but on account of its higher temperature the body radiates more energy per unit time the body radiates more energy per unit time and receives less energy per unit time from the surrounding as a result of which the body loses energy as a result the body loses energy right so that is what happens when a hot body is kept in a cool surrounding right now what happens if a cool body same condition a cold body in a hot surrounding cold body in hot Surrounding. Can someone please explain to me what will happen when a cold body is kept in a hot surrounding? I have a cold body kept in a hot surrounding. What would happen? Temperature rise. Why? It absorbs heat faster than it radiating heat. Right. Now see the rate at which it radiates heat is a function of the temperature. Since it is at a lower temperature, it will radiate less heat and it will absorb more heat, and as a result of which the temperature will rise. right will you all be able to write this explanation on your own after looking at the previous explanation right will you all be able to do this the body continuously radiates heat to the surrounding at the same time it absorbs heat from the surrounding but on account of its being at a lower temperature the body radiates less energy per unit time and receives more energy per unit time from the surrounding as a result of which the temperature of the body rises or the body gains energy Will you all be able to write that explanation on your own? It's replica of the previous one. Next, I'm not giving you. I would leave some space so that you can write that explanation on your own. Look at the previous explanation and use a little logic. You should be able to write that. Now, third condition: temperature of body is equal to temperature of surrounding. what will happen if the temperature of the body is equal to the temperature of the surrounding guys what will happen if the temperature of the body is equal to the temperature of the surrounding right there will be no change in the temperature of the body right why will there be no change in the temperature of the body the body continues to radiate see same explanation the body continues to radiate heat to the surrounding at the same time it absorbs heat from the surrounding but on account of both being at the same temperature the body radiates same energy per unit time as it receives per unit time as a result there is no change in uh, the energy of the body and there is no change in the temperature do you understand this i will repeat that once again guys the body the body continues to guys see this the body continues to radiate heat to the surrounding at the same time it absorbs heat from the surrounding 
but on account of its but on account of it being at the same temperature uh, as the surrounding the body radiates same energy per unit time as it receives per unit time from the surrounding as a result the body neither loses nor gains energy and the temperature of the body remains the same so do we understand prevost theory this whole thing is prevost theory so guys when you get in your exam explain prevost theory you will write from here that initial part was to explain to you why a cold body also radiates heat okay you will write from here according to prevost theory and you will give the three conditions next now let's see kirchhoff's law now prevost theory say of heat exchange says that a body in thermal equilibrium with the surrounding radiates and absorbs the same amount of heat energy remember i told you that temperature of the body is equal to the temperature of the surrounding that means it will radiate and absorb the same amount of heat this shows that the emitting energy and the absorbing ability of the body at a given temperature must be same if it is radiating same energy and absorbing same energy that means its radiating ability and absorbing ability at a particular temperature will be same and that is what is kirchhoff's law so kirchhoff's law states that the coefficient of absorption of a body is equal to the coefficient of emission at a particular temperature do you understand from where did kirchhoff's law have come see according to prevost's theory of heat exchanges a body in thermal equilibrium with the surrounding radiates energy at the same rate as it absorbs energy right which means that the emitting and the absorbing ability of a body at a given temperature is same and that is what is your kirchhoff's law right so kirchhoff's law states like this on guys kirchhoff's law states that the coefficient of absorption of a body is equal to the coefficient of emission at any temperature that is what is speech of law therefore i can say that by kirchhoff's law a is equal to e the absorption of a heat is equal to uh, emission of a heat but we had already derived that a coefficient of absorption is e upon eb msf power of the body to the it is the ratio of the msf power of the body to the msf power of the black body no yeah come on cross check guys we have derived that coefficient of absorption is msf power of the body to the msf power e is equal to e upon mc and a is also the same if e is e okay coefficient of emission is the msf power of the body to the msf power of the black body right but e is equal to a therefore a this is by kirchhoff's law therefore a should also be equal to e upon eb i'm substituting the value of e therefore i can say that e is equal to a into eb therefore msf power of a body is equal to coefficient of absorption into msf power of a black body right this also gives you a new definition for kirchhoff's law right from here what we realize is that the ratio of the msf power of msf power uh i could also say that eb msf power of the body upon coefficient of absorption right if i rearrange i can say this so i can say that the ratio of the msf power to the coefficient of absorption 
is same for all bodies at a given temperature and is equal to the emissive power of a black body. The ratio of emissive power of a body to the coefficient of absorption is same for all bodies at a given temperature and is equal to the emissive power of a black body because emissive power of a black body is constant. That's the reason why I said that it is same for same for all the bodies at a given temperature. Right? So let's write this. Kirchhoff's law. Also states that the ratio of emissive power of a body to coefficient of absorption Let's try to experimentally derive Kirchhoff's law. consider guys let us consider a large enclosed space that's your large enclosed space which is thermally isolated from the surrounding large enclosed space that is thermally isolated from the surrounding. Now let us consider an ordinary body and a perfectly black body freely suspended uh, 
having the same surface area and freely suspended at a uniform temperature in the enclosure. Consider an ordinary body O and a perfectly black body B of same surface area freely suspended at a same temperature suspended at a uniform temperature at a uniform so the temperature inside is kept constant. Now, if I apply reverse theory of heat exchanges, there will be exchange of heat between the body and the surrounding. That means there will be exchange of heat between the ordinary body and the surrounding. There will be exchange of heat between the black body and the surrounding and there will also be exchange of heat between the ordinary body and the black body right, right because of this exchange of heat after a certain point of time all the surrounding the ordinary body and the black body will attain the same temperature due to exchange of heat ordinary body will radiate heat black body will radiate and absorb heat ordinary body will radiate and absorb heat and as a result of which the ordinary body the black body and the surrounding all three will attain the same temperature Right? So right, on account of exchange of heat <clears throat> between the bodies and the surroundings. Now even after they have attained the same temperature, the exchange of heat will continue because we had seen as per Prevost area your body continues to exchange heat. So the exchange of heat of heat continues even after They attain same temperature. Right? Now let us assume that A is the surface area of each body. Let us assume that EB is the emissive power of the black body or the body B. Power of body B. Let's assume that E is the immersive power of body O. Let's assume that E is the coefficient of emission. the coefficient of emission of O and let's assume that A is the coefficient of absorption of O. Let us also assume that Q is the uh, quantity of radiant heat energy incident per unit time per unit area for each body. Q is the quantity of radiant energy in 
student or unit area or unit time of each body. Now that we know what each symbol means. Then in that case, what will be the total radiant energy which is incident on the body? Guys, right, can someone tell me what is the total radiant energy incident on the body? This is the radiant energy per unit area. So the total radiant energy will be the radiant energy per unit area into the total area. Right guys? Therefore, I can say that the total radiant energy incident per unit time on the body total radiant energy incident per unit time on a body is going to be equal to Q into A that is per unit area into A now we also said that this small a is the coefficient of absorption Therefore, if A is the coefficient of absorption, then how much heat is absorbed by body O? Heat absorbed by body O will be the total heat energy into its coefficient. This is the total heat energy that is incident on any body. And how much heat it will absorb will depend upon the coefficient of absorption. So I can say that heat energy absorbed by body O will be equal to coefficient of absorption into the total energy. This is the heat energy absorbed per unit time. This is the heat energy absorbed per unit time. Now what is the energy emitted per unit time? Heat emitted per unit time. Heat energy that is going to be emitted per unit time will depend upon its emissive power into the area. Emissive power of the body multiplied by the area because emissive power tells you how much heat energy is absorbed per unit area per unit time. So in that case, if I multiply that by the area, I will come to know what is the total heat energy emitted per unit time. Now, since the temperature and the bodies are at the same uh, since the bodies and the surrounding are at the same temperature that means the total amount of heat energy emitted should be equal to the total amount of heat energy absorbed right I can say therefore energy emitted per unit time should be equal to energy absorbed per unit time the energy emitted per unit time we found out is nothing but Ea energy absorbed per unit time we found out is nothing but AQA A and A gets cancelled therefore I will get that A is equal to of Q is equal to E upon A now this was for the ordinary body now the same logic can be used for black body also right similarly for a black body I can say that emissive power of the black body into the area should be equal to QA because the black for, for a black body the value of absorption is 1 if you consider a perfectly black body for a perfectly black body the coefficient of absorption is 1 therefore I can say I am using the same logic that I use for ordinary body why is there no A here because the coefficient of, of absorption of a black body is 1. 
A and A gets cancelled, so I'll get E B is equal to Q. Now if I equate the two equations, I will get E B is equal to E upon A. And therefore I can say this is from 1 and 2, call this as equation 1, call this as equation 2. This is from 1 and 2. Therefore I can say A is equal to E upon E B. But E upon E B is nothing but the coefficient of emission A is equal to E. And that was what was Kirchhoff's law. Thus experimentally Kirchhoff's law is proved. Experimentally we proved that the coefficient of absorption is equal to coefficient of emission. Right? We will stop this here for the day. Thank you very much.